Good morning. All right, let's try it again. Good morning. Good morning. All right, awesome. Um, so let's just, uh, how's everyone's HTML5 TX going? Just started. Um, yeah, so I'm happy you guys are all here today. Um, talk about adaptive images and responsive web design. Uh, how many people just are doing RWD right now? Responsive web design. How many people are still doing old school fixed width layouts? It's okay. It's a, it's a safe zone here. It's okay. All right, cool. All right, awesome. Cool. Uh, also, I do want to say thanks to uh, HTML5TX, all the volunteers, and everyone who's organizing it. Thank you guys for having me here. It's really great that you guys are doing it again. Um, my name is Christopher Schmidt. I've done a few things. Uh, uh, I've written, I co-authored an HTML5 cookbook with Kyle Simpson. Is he here? No, he's, he's right here. Um, also organized the CSS Dev Conference. Uh, also the online Responsive Web Design Summit and uh, other conferences with E4H. Also just came up with a new book called uh, Design Web and Mobile Graphics. I have one here to give away today. Uh, I give out prizes, uh, free copies of books as prizes for uh, great questions. So yes, I do take questions, but to get a book, it has to be a, a question I can answer. So that's the only problem, so, but, uh, okay, cool. So let's talk about the, the, the iPad, the latest iPad, right? Let's think about what, what it represents. There's like, if, if we're designed for the web, we're designed for mobile, we're designed for multiple devices, and I wanna talk about this one device, is the, like the iPad. It means there's so many challenges in design for the, for the iPad. One is that it can be uh, on a Wi-Fi network. You can just buy iPad Wi-Fi only. You can also buy a 3G or wireless uh, a cell phone, enable, a cell tower enabled uh, iPad. So you can have like you know, Wi-Fi broadband streams or you can have like slow uh, bandwidth. Also you have retina issues. You have the high screen uh, definition, uh, HD definition screen to deal with, uh, and then you also have to deal with uh, also, you know, people browsing and you know, issues with that. So uh, when you want to des design for the web, you want to design really great looking images for the web. And so what the iPad kind of represents is like this turning point in how we design uh, for the web. And so we want to make really great graphics, but our old school graphics that's linked to DPI or PPI just don't really matter. So, how can we get these really great graphics to devices like the iPad? And so one of the things that we could do is say, why don't we just ask the browser who you are and then just say, okay, well, you're this person, this browser, let me just give you the images that you need to make that happen. And in fact, we can actually do that. And it was actually built in the first browser, uh, um, Mozilla, right? So you can actually, you can actually go uh, user agent string and say, hey, who are you, uh, what type of browser are you, you are, and it's just like, oh, I'm Mozilla, um, 1.0, Windows 3.1, if you remember that operating system. Uh, and, uh, but then other browsers came on the market and said, hey, I'm totally not IE, I'm also Mozilla, I'm also, uh, so I'm totally capable of doing what Mozilla does, so uh, totally give me all the graphics that you would give Mozilla. And then other br browsers came on the market, right? This is Safari, Safari is how many browsers? It's uh, their Mozilla, their WebKit, their Gecko, their, they're like everything, man. They're not like, they're all over the place. So it became, it's come obvious, like, you know, you just can't really use the agent string because of spoofing and, you know, people just, all the browsers will fake out just so that they don't get uh, locked out of, uh, of doing, uh, of locked out of content that would be served to other browsers. And actually, uh, Opera had, uh, positions called open web or web openers and they would actually go out to companies that would do like kind of like browser sniffing and actually that would block out like the upper browser to actually go out and say, hey, let's just, you know, let's change your code a little bit so you're not like blocking out the whole web and like you're actually uh, having, um, getting everyone can serve the content. So instead of asking for a browser what to do in order to deliver these great images that we wanted, wanted to do, we actually do what's called feature testing or browser testing. So the kind of feature testing we're looking at is uh, kind of three things. One is uh, browser width, right? So we can go add, we're going to determine what the browser width that the person is using, right? So with uh, JavaScript, it's kind of easy, kind of doing scripting. Uh, this is the uh, like vanilla JavaScript, if you will, approach. 
We also do it with uh, jQuery. It's kind of easier to do it with jQuery. Uh, we also ask it with uh, CSS media queries, right? We just say, hey, uh, if your screen is this size, uh, I'll deliver these images to you. Uh, if you're this size, I'll deliver these images to you. If you're over 910, I'll get deliver these images to you. But that's not the full story, right, of trying to deliver the right images to the right browser at the right, you know, at the right time. Because the, the width will only give you the width of, of the browser. It won't give you what, what's actually inside the canvas. So, so we just can't rely on the browser width. So, so let's look at the other feature test we have to do. Screen resolution, right? In the beginning, everything was 72 PPI. It was all great, right? So uh, Max actually came out and they actually said 72 PPI, 72 points per inch uh, is almost exactly like 72 pixels per inch, uh, which is like old school design metrics and how they do it. Uh, and that served them well. Windows came along and said, we're gonna, th we're gonna think differently. We're gonna do something really crazy. We're gonna call it 96 uh, points per inch. And the reason behind that is because they noticed that the fonts, smaller fonts, were, um, were kind of Ill illegible for them. So they actually increased it so that at 96 PPI that the smaller fonts were actually more legible. So Windows was actually trying to be more helpful, if you will, by being different. So, uh, but that only served us so, so well because now we have retina displays. And in the slide, there's a, uh, uh, the top portion is an old school iPhone display. And here is actually the same distance, the actual same number. You see like there's like four LED kind of displays for the same amount of space as one. So, so we're actually packing a lot more like displays in, in the same amount of space. So, and the whole uh, retina is pretty much, uh, the marketing term is retina is that if it looks as good as printed paper when you look at your phone. So, and retina display changes depending on which device Apple is selling you. Uh, so it's, you know, it's re different retinas for like iPads. So iPads, you hold iPads differently than you would if you look at uh, a MacBook Pro, and so like that. So, and this is a really great thing is that you're actually able to pack so much con content or like displays, if you will. You actually get like crisper text. So, so whereas we're kind of faking right here, on the left side is a standard display. We actually get like, by packing in uh, more LED, like little displays in there, we get smoother text right there. And so what does, this, what does this mean for images? Well, we have an image right here at 72 PI, and we hit higher resolution, or higher uh, the screen display. Uh, the image will actually get kind of shrink. That. And this is not just for Macs. Actually, for this year, uh, all the PC uh, vendors are coming out with their kind of HD uh, retina experiences. So it's not just an isolated experience with uh, doing HD graphics just for uh, Mac uh, products. Uh, so we're gonna see a lot of Windows devices this year that could be on higher resolution displays. So, and so what does this mean? So we have the same 2PI, we can rescale it down to 240, but if we rescale it up, it's gonna kind of, kind of blurry. We try to stretch it out, it won't be look, look as crisp. Uh, but if we take the same image as 240 PPI and we scale it down, it's gonna look, you know, it's gonna look pretty nice. It's gonna be able to look okay because there's a lot more image content in there and as the computer tries to uh, hash it down into a smaller image, it's not gonna lose as much uh, integrity going this way versus the other way. However, we can't just always serve large RD graphic, uh, HD graphics to people because that, what that means is retina displays means larger images, larger file sizes, right? And so with the iPad, like we said, we, people can be surfing on a uh, wireless network, uh, like a, a 3G network or a 4G network, uh, that'd be kind of slow until you're like shoving down a big retina graphic on their machine, it takes forever for it to, to display. So it'll be a while before that. And again, that goes to the next thing that we can test for is uh, bandwidth testing. So, and so I'm not a big fan of speed tests, but because speed tests actually hinder the user experience. And user experience in this, in this uh, essence is performance, right? How fast a web page loads has direct bearing on you know, conversions, profits, uh, Amazon was Amazon was off for almost an hour yesterday, and they lost like I think someone they calculated like they lose like was a hundred thousand dollars a minute or four hundred thousand dollars a minute at Amazon's front page is off, offline. So, and uh, and just by and also they do speed tests for like how slow things go. Uh, Google will go through great lengths to uh, shave off milliseconds and uh, and their search results. So, 
Um, but for speed tests, uh, it's kind of hard to like determine how fast someone's connection is going. And in fact, um, I was talking to uh, Tab Atkins, and I said like testing for speed uh, of an internet connection is like stepping in front of a car to see how fast it's going, right? It's like that's the only only way you can really tell. And Tab's are like, well, that's great, Chris, but you, that's great because you only have to do it once to know how fast that car is going. So like, okay. And so how you do speed tests really is that you take a known quantity, like this big image right here, and you know how big it is, and let's say it's about 50K, and you add 50K to your overall page deployment, right? And then that way you see, you throw this down there and you can test to see how, how fast it took for that image to download. And so, um, so I don't think that's really great that you add 50K when we have like, there's all these tests, I'm not sure if there's a contest this year or not, but there's one last year, like a couple years ago, that. Uh, like the 10K app test that was out there. There's also back uh, 5K web page. So you can do a lot of stuff with just 5K, uh, but now we're asking like, to like, do like a 50K test just to, uh, just to see how fast things are going. So it's not really great. There's actually a native speed test called Navigate. There's an object called navigator.connection. And so basically the browser can tell you through JavaScript how fast your connection is going. And so uh, this is actually uh, uh, ready to use as of Android 2.2. So this is, you actually test this out right there. Uh, last time I checked, there was rumors of a WebKit. I'm not sure, if, does anyone know it's in WebKit yet? No. Okay. It's been a while. I'm not sure if it's gonna be dropping in mobile WebKit or not. But, uh, but yeah, so there's actually a mobile way of doing it. Um, so, so, so in order to, uh, so how can we actually give people responsive images? How do you test it out? Well, one way to, to figure out that out is to do, uh, do a lot of series of hacks and, and programming to work around that. One way is to modify the HD access and do actually mod rewrite and do a whole bunch of uh, uh, backend support. And so one of the things that uh, the Filmic group has done is done just that, to check out the rewriting and actually uh, append extra information to their image tag. So they actually do uh, sample content, small JPEG. So uh, Filmic's really big into mobile first, but they, they give you the small image first and uh, then they say like, you know, you know, question mark, you know, adds full, and here's a full image, so content running large. And so what happens is that they'll actually get the, get the uh, serve up the, the mobile image first, but then if they determine the browser is, uh, can handle a full size image, they'll actually just uh, rewrite the, the whole uh, image tag right there for you. And so it's actually pretty sweet. However, that the way, this kind of solution though, uh, doesn't really tell the server what the resolution of the client's device is. So while you might be serving up a large image, it not, might not be the right image for the browser, might not be the right retina uh, display image for that. So, so there's actually another solution out there called adaptive-images.com. And its solution is, again, it builds off the HE access, does HE access, does the JavaScript, does PHP, and does the graphics uh, library, and then does the image uh, for it. So actually, it does everything on the fly. It's almost like uh, Word's thumb for WordPress if you do it. So actually, like, will go out, generate the image, and deliver the right image to the browser. However, it's really intensive in terms of servers. Like, you need, uh, you need to have the PHP, you need to have the graphics library, you need to have everything rolling to, to make it work. And so I don't really think that's a really great solution in terms of, you know, as simple as the image element is, it's like so awesome just to do image source, have one image, and you're good to go. So, so that's one, one solution. Another solution uh, is the picture uh, and or source set. Uh, this has been like a big brouhaha over the past year and a half or so. But uh, so a new picture element for HTML5 has been on its way to be proposed. Uh, and so uh, kind of the polyfill right now is that uh, if, if, if the picture element is borrowed a lot from the video element. So built for the video controls, like for video, you can have uh, different media queries built into the video uh, element. And so we they kind of borrowed that from that same type of mentality for the picture element. And so for the, uh, since we don't have a picture element just yet in browsers, uh, there's a patch for it, a polyfill for it. So you actually have to have, uh, you know, uh, commented out source files right here, and they have a no script. So, so, so the picture element, picture element is not recognized by browsers. The browser will come in. If it doesn't understand JavaScript or doesn't understand uh, all this other stuff right here, it'll just go to uh, no script, pull in the image right here. But if it does understand JavaScript, does understand the uh, the polyfill, it will actually pull out the right image based off of the uh, mid-width uh, image uh, 800 
Oh, it's a little bit right HD image for you, so it's pretty, it's pretty good. So, so I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that because it depends on if else, it depends on borrowing a lot of stuff from video, which isn't really images. So uh, you need JavaScript for it. So it's kind of a, kind of a weird mix for it too. Uh, another solution is uh, source set. Is uh, so it's sort of do uh, image and source set. So you actually just state uh, if we want an HD uh, image for a uh, device that uh, has retina or uh, two times the pixel density uh, has, or if you want to give like a phone image have a hundred pixel width, or if you want to have a hundred pixel width uh, image high definition for the phone, do retina like that. So, so this was proposed, but it's, it's still there's not really a poly. There's actually a kind of polyfill for it, but it's not as popular as the picture element. So, but, uh, but any questions about those two things so far? Yeah, question. Um, in the first section on feature detection, yeah. Not ratio, oh yeah, pixel pixel ratio is uh, is basically like uh, one is like 70, like seventy two ppi, and uh, retina is like kind of like the doubling of that, it's like one hundred forty. Mm -hmm. Right, right, and I, actually, um, I believe that's uh, is that in picture polyfill? Does anyone know if it's polyfill or that? But uh, yeah, so um, I have another solution right here, uh, a high source. I actually work on, uh, I've worked on this for, uh, for a while, so there was actually, we're actually kind of updating it to, to have like HD kind of detection in there. So, but yeah, good point. So, uh, so I came up with a H source one um, and worked with it, Mark Bansky and um, some other great uh, coders. And so basically it's a JavaScript one. And the idea is just that you would just set it and forget it. And so, uh, so you basically do jQuery, have uh, HSource in there, and then just do like, hey, every time you have a class attribute with, with image in there, just go for it. So you just do it like this. Div class high source, image, mobile, mobile first, data one, data two, so like H, so basically like HD, like the, 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 the double, um, double density, one X. So you, so you actually did deliver the right image at the right time. And so what, what the high source does, it actually goes through a series of responsive checks. So it actually does go through all the feature text, checks. But we actually have to go through each check because not each check, feature check, uh, gives you the full picture. So first we have to do a native speed test for mobile device. So uh, if, that, if that passes, we can actually give the right image for the right time. Also then we can do, um, we can actually do the device pixel ratio test. Say hey, like, let us know which one you are. If you're not HD, we won't give you the HD image. Um, then if, we, if the mobile speed test fails, if we can't figure it out natively, if it's not Android 2.2 or higher, if there's some other device, we'll do this uh, force speed test right here, which will give you 50K. And if it's less, so what that means is like, if we determine your speed is less than 4G, we'll just give you the mobile images that we just delivered basically as our image source value. If it's between 4G and 300 uh, kilobits per second, we'll just give you the regular desktop image and if we actually determine that your density of your browser by doing the test, uh, we'll actually swap out the retina images for that. So, so that's how we just do. It. Yeah. What's up? Um, can you use uh, your delivering a mobile app image? Yeah, that's actually one thing that we thought about doing. Is that, however, in terms of uh, setting it and forgetting kind of philosophy that we have, is that your images might change later on, or you might deliver your your website to someone else on the road, and they, they might swap out the graphic, and then that file size might change, and so it's really hard to go about doing that. However, one thing we thought about doing was like determining the file size of the actual JavaScript that we delivered, so there's like a known quantity of uh, JS file that we want you know about that you have to deliver that's crucial to your web development platform, and you actually test for that to see how fast that goes down. What does feature text do for the mobile Yeah, so you can do a cookies, like if you wanted to, do the cookies like that, so, but people don't like cookies these days, so terrible, whatever, but uh, so yeah, so you can do it with cookies or whatever you want to do. So, yeah. so any questions? Any good questions. Yes. Yeah, well, that's like, that's a great question, because uh, that's the problem with browsers that they, uh, in order to make things so much faster now, they'll prefetch 
anything they can get to grab, grab their greedy little hands on, right? And so that's kind of hard because what we want to do is actually, hey, wait a second, let me find out what the, this browser is before I give you the images. And the browser's like, hey, whatever, dude, I'm grabbing what I can and, uh, before I get to. So uh, there was actually a tax, and we're going to brought this up, is that uh, we, I kind of consider this like the mobile, like the HD tax, if you will, is that uh, you will, if you have an HD device, um, you will probably tax by giving a mobile version of the image first, and then you download that. And I think that's a better way of going about it than saying the other way around, right? Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah, so like, I'd rather not give someone who's on low speed connection an HD image and say, oh, wait, hey, you just downloaded this huge graphic, congratulations, bam, here's a low res version for you. Um, no, I'm not, is it, does anyone know, like, is it a pre, me queries won't respect prefetches? Well, if you have a, you know, high res image and then a background mm -hmm. image for a kid, right. you know, it's going to be anywhere versus low res image, the mm -hmm. background is going to be anywhere, and the prefetch is going to grab both, big, small. Well, that's a great question. Let me go back to the next, that's resetting up to the next part, okay. which is that high source does actually two things, has two solutions for it, it actually it does, Two, uh, two solutions for it. One is uh, the one solution that we just went through, right? And then the other one, it goes, it actually uses media queries for design. And so what, what that does is that we actually use media queries are, are awesome, because you actually, as we went before, before, talked about before, uh, media queries, you can actually determine what the width are and uh, determine uh, the, uh, you know, determine uh, HD values and stuff like that. So what things, what uh, the, it, we can actually do a little flag and say, okay, H source, I don't want to do like what the previous solution does, the previous technique does, we want to do this solution. And the other solution is to bring back the single pixel get GIF, right? And what we can do is, if we have an image, we can swap that image out with a single pixel GIF, which makes it transparent, and we actually bring in that HD image that we want, or whatever specific image that we want, to so actually go through and deliver the right image at the right, at the right time, so. And um, so, and does, so we we'll like that, use transparent GIF, true. And so we actually, actually, we actually make it like, you know, data image, uh, GIF face, do like that, and I bring it in, or we actually have the source for it, and it goes back all, to, all the way to IE6, so it actually does two solutions. But what happens if JavaScript is off? Excuse me, sorry. What happens if JavaScript is off? JavaScript is off. Uh, what would happen is like you want to deliver the mobile first image, okay. and so that way, so that way you have like at least the image from mobile first be there. And so if JavaScript's turned off, uh, they would just actually get the mobile first version of the image. So, uh, but so I really don't, but people just don't turn off JavaScript. It's pretty much the, I know. Oh, you do? Okay, how many people also turn off I mean, JavaScript? No script. No script, how many people? This guy's awesome right here. This guy's <laughs> awesome. Here you go, sir, this is good. <laughs> You deserve that one, man, sorry. All right. All right, so some other workarounds. So maybe we don't need to work with raster images, because that's a real issue, right, is raster images is the problem. So what we can do is do look, look some tricks or workarounds, uh, and these aren't gonna be the end all be all. These aren't the simple bullets for raster images, but these are kind of the things that we can look at. One is uh, background size auto, and so uh, one of the cool, uh, Cool uh, JavaScript solutions or jQuery solutions plugins is uh, Fit Text. How many people know about Fit Text? Awesome. So, so Fit Text is uh, basically a jQuery plugin, and so as you scale uh, your text, your like your headlines, it will scale the size to meet the parent element of it. So, so basically, how you have your headings will scale with the with the column text. So it's really awesome. But what I love about the website is that there's this arrow right here. It's a background image set to uh, background size uh, auto in CSS, and it will actually shrink and expand depending on how big the, the parent element is that contains the background image, so it's really cool. And so it's really just simple as background image, background size, and so it doesn't matter how big or retina or whatever like that, so it actually will expand with it, and so uh, it will, you know, so it's not like the end all be all of solutions, but it's a pretty, pretty nice one. Uh, the other one is SVG. Uh, SVG is awesome now, so uh, I've been waiting for SV, SVG to be around for a long time, so uh, it's, it's finally here. There's still some issues here and there with SVG and browser support, but uh, 
but it's pretty, pretty awesome. So uh, it's actually su support for SVG in line is pretty much across the board um, as of uh, IE9. So you have uh, Opera, uh, Chrome, Firefox. So it actually depending on what image you're doing, SVG might be actually slower, like lower file size than an actual raster image, and so you actually gain so much more uh, with it. And so, uh, but of course, if you're more complex, complex the image file format, the, the image quantity, the image data, if you will, uh, the higher res the uh, SVG is going to be. So, um, so, and um, and so if you need support for back for older browsers, i.e., you can use Monizer, uh, but you can also do like this kind of like little jQuery hack. I, Put together. So if you actually use HTML5 boilerplate, you actually like key off of the class name uh, less than IE9 to uh, do jQuery check, and it's pretty cool. Uh, so it's actually put I put it on the web on GitHub. If you guys want to get it, it's cool. Uh, also, another trick is to use font-based solutions, right? Uh, and one of them is to use Unicode characters, right? Unicode is should, should be supported in all your OSs and browsers. Uh, so if you actually just do a copy and paste with symbols uh, like the uh, musical notes or the telephone icon, you actually copy and paste and put it into your browser as long as you have Unicode in your uh, meta tags, uh, meta, meta character set, uh, your browser should display it, right? The only problem is that for accessibility reasons, like screen readers, uh, your, the, browser, the screen readers might not read it, right? So it might actually, if you're lucky, it will say uh, Unicode character XYZ. If you're not lucky, it'll just like give you garbage and move on to the next thing. So, would not recommend using Unicode for that. Just until the screen readers get uh, uni more universal on that. Uh, the, only, the bad part is that it takes yeah, screen readers a long time to get updated. So, uh, another solution is a font-based responsive web design. Font families. Uh, if you have a really good typeface, there's lots of font families with inside of it, right? So, uh, one solution would be to like have the like, kind of universe. Uh, typeface has different uh, widths, uh, different weights to it, and it's pretty cool. So you actually deliver, the idea here is to deliver kind of a thinner font for like a mobile uh, experience, and if you have a big uh, retina desktop display, you actually deliver kind of a, a weighter, thicker font for it. My only concern with that is that font files are really huge, right? So you're delivering like a lot more uh, file sizes for this effect, so I'm not really a big fan of this. Uh, solution, but it's definitely one way to go, especially if, if you're not good, like, if you can actually determine like speed natively. With that. Question? Uh, right. So you actually like like import like which font you want. So, right. Yeah. So. So that right. Yeah. So I wouldn't do it like for like every spectrum that you're trying to deliver for every device spectrum. So yeah. Uh, another thing you do is. Uh, Icon fonts, uh, Chris Coyer from CSS Tricks, big fan of icon fonts, and I totally respect that. So, um, and so what you can do is actually uh, use icons from fonts uh, just to you know, give, so if you want to do icons, you just deliver fonts. And also with uh, Font Squirrel, you can actually determine which subset of characters you want uh, for your fonts. You can actually like, compact your fonts even more if you want to. So it's an advanced feature of Font Squirrel to do that, so it was really great. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, cool fonts. Uh, symbol set, I believe is the right one, where you actually type out the word and actually create, so if you type out cart and you actually import, like include the font in, in your browser, embed it, it will actually just display the uh, shopping cart icon. And uh, there's actually um, uh, resources out there that you actually combine these open source icon fonts and click which icons you want from different font files and make a greater or expanding a font for it, so it's pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, one thing to be aware of is that if you do, don't, if, if you do use the icon fonts that are keyed off of uh, letters or characters, that uh, you use uh, this kind of solution right here, which is uh, basically put that, use the data attribute icon like for C, so C will key off of, of um, this cloud uh, icon right here, and you put aria hidden true, and so that's gonna keep the, uh, uh, screen reader from reading the letter C uh, altogether. And so basically, so you use span tag, use the content generation CSS to actually put in, to input the letter C in there, so the browser actually puts it in there. And then actually, for people who can see, we'll actually see the cloud icon and it'll actually be hidden from screen readers at the same time. So it's a really great way to, to do both things right there. 
And this is all three tr uh, tips, but I have a fourth one. Compressed JPEGs. So uh, this came out kind of recently, I did some research on it. So basically the idea of compressed JPEGs is to take a normal JPEG, but take the source file and make a, get a really large JPEG, right? And then you take that really large JPEG and you save the compression, you, you compress it to 100% so it looks really ugly, right? And the idea behind that is that you would take this really big, ugly, huge JPEG, squeeze it down to like 100% you know, width into the space of the parent element, and that the browser tries to make calculations on how to like, you know, which pixels are the best way to represent you know, the, the image. And the idea is that uh, the image will look sharper for both uh, HD retina displays as well as regular uh, non-retina displays as well. So, and um, what's really cool is that uh, I did some testing, and so here's like extreme, is the extreme large file, and it's uh, going to be delivered for both uh, regular, regular displays and HD displays. Uh, the file size, when it's compressed, is actually 446K, um, if I compare it to other images, it's like, uh, it's like 17, uh, like 1.7, uh, 170 kilobits. Uh, uh, for, a, for a regular display, it's 500. So actually, this extreme version, compressed at 100% uh, max, is actually lower than the one that you get for like a big screen size. So, so there's actually, if you deliver this huge image that's compressed to 100% and squeeze it down, uh, you actually get some file savings for both uh, regular uh, displays as well as the HD display. So that's, so that's one way of going about doing that. So and I kind of like that solution because then it's just like image source, one image, and you're done, right? So that's pretty sweet. There is a caveat to it, is that if your image has high contrast or has uh, really subtle gradients, and so like this image right here, so if you can see on her face, she looks like she's becoming a zombie right there. And then also you can see kind of like, you can't really see on the display, but there's kind of gradients right there. So it's not gonna work on those kind of high contrasty and, and also subtle gradient kind of photos. So what you really want, this trick really works well on images that are like, like you know, for a histogram in Photoshop, you really want a nice valley look and feel. It works great on these type of images. It doesn't work well when there's like spikes up and down. So, so that way, because the browser's gonna have issues when it resizes to try to smooth things out. So it's gonna have, have, have a lot more trouble trying to re recreate that kind of image when it's kind of scaling down. So, so, that, so there we go. We kind of walked through kind of the feature testing, kind of the issues that come up with like a Retina iPad and, and what, what, we, what we can do to like work around it. And we kind of like talked about issues when we kind of polyfills to deal with it right now. Uh, but one thing I do love like, I do want to talk about is, is that maybe we need a whole different way of uh, talking about that. Uh, we need like a way some people just do image source, and I think the compressed JPEGs are probably the best way of doing that right now, but we probably need another uh, issue because I just foresee uh, a lot of content producers out there who aren't like you guys who actually go to a web conference like HTML5TX and come here and learn how to do, and learn your craft to be better and better, is that they're gonna just make it HD graphic slap into an image source and just upload it and force people on mobile devices and uh, do kind of crazy things. So what we really need is a solution that will help those people who just do content and just throw it up there and make it easy for people. Uh, we also need like uh, an image uh, solution that will like work with the browser and the ser server at the same time and also can uh, work with images so that it's the same type of image but you can handle different formats. And so I would really like to see like a kind of an image format, like a responsive image format be made so that we actually do like kind of like an image, do a server handshake to the browser and deliver one image so that the image, so, so when the browser comes and say, hey, I need this image, the server says like, well, I know you're at this speed, I know you're on this device, let me go get you that, that image right there and pull it out and give you the right one. And so we have like, a, like one image be a container of image, images in there. And so, and it's not something kind of like, that's kind of crazy or out of the sky because Microsoft has actually done this already, right? They've already, they've already built this. Uh, the old school Microsoft, not the new one, but. Uh, <laughs> so, and we actually, it's actually also a web format that we actually use in developing web pages today. It's called a fav icon, right? 
So I don't know if you know or not, but you know, the fave icon started as that .ico file, right? And so, uh, and with ICO file, you can put different resolutions in the same file. And since we have retina displays now, uh, if your browser can handle it, we'll actually pull out the 32 by 32 one, or the 16 by, or if you can't handle it, it'll go to the 16 by 16 one and pull that one out. So we actually have a file format that's responsive, but it's only for five page icon. So it's something that, that can be done. Uh, there's actually other form of file formats, kind of like obscure flash picks that was around like 10 years ago or 15 years ago now. So. Right. Right. So it's not the perfect solution. So I'm not, not saying going out and say, Christopher said, get rid of all JPEGs. I'm going to do the ICO files from now on. I'm not saying that whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Right? So, yeah. And, and look, what if you just have like a Apache module? I just do that and you just tie it into it. So it's awesome. So, like, so this solution is, is a lot better to me. Like, I like, just think of this as an image source, image file, than let's say uh, if you're trying to do a mobile mar bookmark for your iPhone app, right? Uh, and you're trying to give it to the right iOS, you want to try to get your right bookmark to your right mobile device for, for Apple, this is what you have to do. You have to do, like, this, the one version is for the old versions of iOS, one's for, like, the uh, old school Retina version of it, and you have, like, you have to do all these things if you want the right bookmark for your mobile. So I think this version is a lot better, a lot more saner, and a lot more user friendly for people than that. So, with that, thank you so much. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know.